So hi everyone. Um, this is going to be the last talk in this session block, and uh, the talk is going to be given by Roshan Yakaman, who is uh, a researcher at the Wigner Research uh, Center in Budapest, and uh, I know her for a long time, so it's a real pleasure for me to introduce her today. And um, Oshi, the floor is yours, please. Thank you, Aurel, and thank you for this very nice opportunity to present a talk here. I will try to share my screen. And hopefully now you can see my screen, right? Aurel? Aurel, can you give me some feedback? Yes, 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 you can see it is perfect. Everything was fine. It's just that I was moving. Okay, sorry, I, 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 yeah, okay, I go back. Yeah, everything is fine. Okay, thank you. Okay, so. Uh, okay, now it, okay, now it is good. Good, okay. please go ahead. Thank you. So I, I, I gave this title measurement induced nonlinear dynamics of qubits because in today talk, today's talk, I will talk about some seemingly simple quantum information protocols where um, we, we will man manipulate uh, qubits. And uh, because we introduced some measurement in the, uh, in the scheme, and because we have uh, qubits prepared in the, in the same initial state, uh, you will see that uh, we will get some, some interesting nonlinear time evolution. Uh, due to these uh, things. So let me just quickly introduce uh, the people that I work with. So here in Vigna, uh, our group is led by Tomasz Kish, and originally he started this project. And uh, Adrian Ortega is a postdoc in our group, and Attila Portik is an MST student. So we are working together here in, in the Vigna, and we are collaborating with Igor Yaxis group at the Czech Technical University in Prague when Mati Malakov and also Aurel is uh, partially working on, on these topics. And um, we also collaborate with an experimental group, which is led by Peng Shue in Beijing at the Computational Science Research Center, and uh, two of her um, students, Gao Yanzhu and Denke Shu, they um, were working on the experimental realization of, of one of our, uh, or actually two of our um, protocols. So let me start with very, very simple things. So everybody knows that a general single qubit pure state can be, can be described with two complex numbers, complex amplitudes. But of course, the quantum state, in order to be a valid quantum state, there is a, a normalization condition involved. So actually, it's not really two, uh, two complex numbers, but rather three um, real uh, par parameters which describe the quantum state. But even this can be further simplified. And this is something that is, might not be so obvious for everybody, but we can, uh, we can describe a single qubit quantum, pure, pure quantum state with a single complex number Z with very simple um, modifications that I show here on my slide. So basically, a single complex number is enough to describe the quantum state. We just need to... Um, um, extend uh, the complex numbers with a value for infinity. This is because um, in order to be able to describe the quantum state one, this Z complex number uh, has to be uh, equal to infinity. And in this way, Z equals infinity describes the quantum state one, Z equals zero uh, describes quantum state zero. And uh, this is a very useful uh, thing because in this way we can uh, we can visualize these pure qubit states either on the on the complex plane or on the on the block sphere or equivalently the Riemann sphere and the connection between these two types of visualization is done through the stereographic projection where where as this figure shows we can um, 
project uh, the quantum states onto the equatorial plane of the of the block sphere by connecting these states with a straight line with the south pole of the sphere and then wherever the this line intersects the plane that will be uh, the image the projection of the quantum state onto the complex plane so the northern hemisphere will be mapped inside this circle here and the southern hemisphere will be mapped outside of course the quantum state one which corresponds to the infinity it cannot be represented on on, on the plane uh, and uh, and this circle here corresponds to the unit circle on the so the the equator of the block sphere will um, correspond to the unit circle on the complex plane. So let me show you the, the basic scheme, the very, very basic scheme for, for a nonlinear straight state transformation in, um, uh, in these protocols. Let us take two qubits in the same initial state psi zero, which we parameterize with this complex number z. And then, uh, then let us have a C naught gate act on these two qubits. And after the C naught, we measure the target qubit. And if we find it in the state zero, then we keep the control qubit. That's the basic uh, idea. And um, just for you to see how this nonlinearity arises, let me show you uh, this very simple calculation. So the so the input state is a product state of psi zero with psi zero. And uh, so this state is, is a linear combination of the zero, zero plus z times zero, one plus z times one, zero plus z squared, uh, one, one. And as a result of the C naught gate, these states get transformed into something else. So when the control is zero, nothing happens. But when the control is one, then the target the state of the target will flip. So it, flipping occurs in these two terms. And then when we measure the target qubit, we can easily see that only these two terms give a contribution. So the, the state of the control qubit will be transformed into zero plus z squared one. And of course it has to be normalized. So if we compare the initial state to the outcome state, we can see that uh, there was a squaring of this Z parameter, which describes the quantum state. So basically the, the, this one step uh, of, of, of the protocol will be, we will be described, it, it will be uh, described by, uh, by this uh, complex function F of Z being uh, equal to Z squared. So this was just one step, but we can, we can of course think of having more uh, steps of such a protocol. For this, we need many qubits in the same initial state, size zero. So we need, an, we need an ensemble of qubits. And then we can form pairs of them, apply the same scheme. And in this way, we can iterate this, this F function that I showed you. And of course, for, for higher iterates of, of, of such a, uh, such a function or map, we need all previous steps to succeed. So for one step, we just need this uh, uh, circuit. But for, for two steps, we need another first step to, to succeed. And for a third step, of course, we need again two successful steps. So in everywhere we need to have, uh, need to have to measure zero on the target qubit. So if we iterate such a nonlinear map, this very simple z square, we can we can plot, we can color <clears throat> color the the complex plane according to where the states converge. And these two colors show the two convergences. So if we take states which have um, absolute value of z smaller than one, they will all converge to zero. This is an attractive fixed point, we say this, or we know this from, from the theory of, of, of these complex uh, functions. So this is an attractive fixed point. And if we take um, complex numbers which, which have an absolute value larger than one, 
they will converge to infinity. That's, a, that's, that's another fixed point of the dynamics, an attractive one. And the border between these two uh, regions is the so-called Julia set, uh, which is in this case the unit circle. And these states, uh, which lie in, in the unit circle, they correspond to chaotic dynamics. And, and uh, actually all the repelling uh, cycles of, of this, uh, of this uh, complex map are contained in this uh, Julia set. Just to show you how things work on the, on the block sphere, so the northern hemisphere corresponds to this, to this circle on the complex thing. And they all converge to quantum state zero. The states from the southern hemisphere, they converge to, to quantum state one. And the equator corresponds to the Julia set. If instead of the C node gate, we apply some other unitary, for instance, this one that I'm showing on this slide, then we get a different nonlinear transformation, which is uh, which is this one, this f equals 2z over 1 plus z squared. And this map is, is somewhat similar to the previous one, but now the Julia set will be different. So if we, if we plot quantum, the quantum states and color them according to, to where they converge, we can find again two uh, super, actually super attractive fixed points. So these are these are very attractive ones, the plus one and the minus one on the complex plane. And now the, the Julia set will be the imaginary axis on, on the complex plane, which corresponds to, um, to this figure on the block sphere. So every state that comes from this right hemisphere, they converge to, to the zero plus one, uh, quantum state, everything else on the other, uh, other uh, hemisphere, they will go to zero minus one. So now, now the Julia set on the block sphere is a great circle again, but now it's situated in a, in a different way. It, it's, uh, it goes through the uh, y-axis. And we can also see how many steps these, uh, these initial states need in order to, to get very close to these uh, fixed, uh, fixed states, which are attractive. So, let, so for instance, if we take a quantum state from this part and from, from this part, so with values equal to 0 0.2 and minus 0 0.2, uh, and then we, we iterate them, which needs to, so we need to think of these as two ensembles of qubits. So we have many qubits in the, in the quantum state, psi zero, one. And also we have many qubits in the other quantum state, psi zero, two. And these initially actually can have very large overlap. But when, when we iterate uh, the protocol, because they converge to orthogonal uh, final states, then they get very far from each other. So their overlap will decrease. And this can happen only in only three steps. Actually, this protocol was, uh, was implemented by the Chinese group. Um, as a, this was the first implementation of, of one of the nonlinear protocols. Now let me move to another scheme um, where we have again the C node gate, but now, we add another uh, quantum gate in the circuit, and this will this quantum gate will only act on the qubit that we keep in every successful step. And if this unitary is the one that is depicted here, then the nonlinear map will be this z squared plus i over i z squared plus one, and this map is is interesting because. It is known from the theory of complex dynamical functions that this is an, a, a so-called latte map. Such a map does not have any attractive fixed cycles. 
and all pure initial states belong to the Julia set. So there is no attractive cycles, nothing converges, everything is chaotic. Every initial state is chaotic. So this, this map or this uh, system is, uh, can be considered ergodic because a small area on the block sphere will evolve after a finite number of steps um, in a way that it will cover the whole block sphere. Actually, this map was found by uh, Andras Gien when he was working in our group with, with Tamás Gies. Um, okay, so, so this is a, a, a map with uh, fully chaotic behavior, but what happens if there is noise in the system? Does noise destroy, destroy this property? So this is what we we investigated um, actually numerically. So we could determine what happens for uh, mixed initial states. Mixed initial states describe uh, noise in, uh, in, in our case. And um, we found that after long enough uh, iteration, so long enough time evolution, of course, noise will destroy this uh, chaotic behavior. Every initial state eventually will end up in the maximally mixed state. But in the beginning, in the first few iterations, if, if states are, are not so uh, noisy in the beginning, then one can say that the protocol behaves in a quasi ergodic way. So if we take states from a small neighborhood of a slightly mixed initial state, and we iterate um, at the protocol, then we will find that these states will approximately cover all regions on the block sphere before getting close to the mixed state. And this is what this figure represents. Um, this, this is another protocol that, that was uh, experimentally realized by the group of Peng Shua. Here is the, the, the figure which shows the details of the of the experiment. So here, uh, actually, two true steps of the scheme were realized. So single photons were generated in a in a parametric down conversion process, and and the four qubits which we need for two iterations. The four qubits were realized in in uh, the polarization degrees of freedom and also in the path degrees of freedom of these two photons. So they, they represented the four qubits. And then in the first iteration, the path qubits are measured and only the polarization qubits are kept. And then in the second uh, iteration, the two polarization qubits uh, interacted away, which is described by the protocol. And then one is measured and, and of course the other one is also analyzed. And these are the figures which show you um, what the measurement resulted in. They pre prepared 16 initial states in a way that two of these states in the first step get mapped to the same part of the block sphere, to the same point. So the left column shows the quantum states after the first iteration and the second column shows after the second iteration. And these are the, the three block uh, coordinates, the spherical coordinates of the quantum states and uh, the black squares, I, not squares, but crosses. So the black crosses show you the theoretically expected uh, results and uh, the blue squares, the red squares uh, show the and dots, blue, blue dots and red dots, they show the experimentally measured quantum states. And there is a fairly good agreement between um, um, the experiment and the theory. Another interesting uh, scheme, which leads to a nonlinear transformation, but with a completely different behavior, is the one that is shown here on this slide. So we start again from, from this C naught. Um, uh, scheme, but then instead of the latte unitary, we add just a Hadamard gate 
on the qubit which we keep. And this, this scheme leads to this nonlinear map fh of z, z, which is 1 minus z squared over 1 plus z squared. And in this case, if we analyze where the initial states will converge, we can find a length to cycle, which is attractive. And this we colored in light blue and dark blue. So after, for instance, an even number of steps, uh, states which are colored light blue, they will converge to quantum state zero or on the complex plane z equals zero. And the others, they will converge to, to this quantum state zero plus one over square root of two. And the border between these two regions will be the Julia set. And now you can see that in this case, the, this Julia set, which contains the chaotic points, is a, is a fractal, the very delicate fractal. Here also, it's interesting to ask whether um, noise will destroy this fractal, this very uh, delicate fractal. In order to describe uh, the process with, with noise, of course, we need to uh, take into account mixed states. And then uh, this is just, just to show you that in, in this case, this uh, nonlinear map will be transforming three real variables, U, V, W, which are the coordinates of this mixed state on the block sphere. Uh, so this, this will transform them in a nonlinear way. One, one interesting thing about this map is that um, there will be a so-called invariant plane inside the block sphere. It means that if we, if we start points from here, iterate the map, we will always end up on this plane. So it is invariant under the iterations. And many interesting uh, things can be seen already on, on this invariant plane. So in the pure case, we saw that this length to cycle, the blue ones are, um, are attractive. And these are, it turns out that these are also attractive for mixed initial states, but not to all of them because some will converge to this so the, the ones that are colored red, they will converge to the maximally mixed state. And then there is this um, C2 uh, fixed point, which is colored in green. This will be a member of the Julia set on, on, the, on the surface. And we also find a mixed fixed point, which is inside the block sphere, this C1 colored in purple. And this will have a special role, I will show you. So what we did is that we introduced more and more noise uh, into the dynamics. And we, we analyzed these stereographic projections uh, on the different purities of the different purity surfaces. And we then uh, numerically determined the fractal dimension of the border between these uh, convergence regions. And what we found is that the, the fractal dimension remains, remains the same, remains constant up to a certain level of noise. So the fractal remains even though we add noise to the dynamics, but there is a critical value of noise or critical value of, of purity where we see that the fractal just uh, disappears and it is not there anymore. So this is like something like a phase transition um, as a function of, of, of noise. And we have been able to, to, uh, to prove that the, this critical purity is actually the purity of this mixed fixed point C1, which I showed you on the invariant plane. So the protocols that I showed you so far only contained two qubits in, uh, in one step of the protocol. But we can also think of protocols involving more qubits, like n qubits. And then we can, we can have uh, nonlinear maps of order n larger than 2. And this is just 
a very simple uh, extension of this Hadamard protocol into n qubits, which I show you here. So here we need to measure zeros in, F, in all the n minus one target qubits. And we only keep the control qubit, which is the uppermost one. And the map will be quite similar to the quadratic map that I showed you before. And also we can describe uh, quite nicely analytically the map for noisy initial states as well. This, this figure, these figures show the, um, the Julia sets of, of uh, these higher order protocols, so n equals three, four, and five. As you can see, the Julia set has more symmetries as, as the, the order of the map is increased. But interestingly, its fractal dimension stays the same. So it's the, the Julia set on the, on the log sphere for pure initial states has the same fractal dimension in all of the cases. And this is just because this fractal actually repeats itself, but it doesn't really change. And also if we add the noise to the, to the initial state and then um, then um, determine the fractal dimension in the noisy case, we can find for each of these protocols uh, the similar, a similar phase transition like um, behavior. Only this critical value of purity changes as the, as the order is increased. And in all of the cases, this critical purity is related to some mixed fixed point inside the block sphere. And uh, just as an outlook to show you, these nonlinear protocols may even be used for benchmarking quantum computers. And this is an idea of uh, Andras Gien. Uh, and he was the, actually the, the first to implement such a nonlinear protocol in a quantum computer or in more quantum computers. Uh, his results are presented in, in this paper. And Today, Adrian Ortega in the evening session and at uh, 7 or 3 p.m., we'll talk about a different nonlinear protocol, but also for the purpose of benchmarking noisy quantum computers. This, this other protocol I, I, I didn't describe in detail in, in this talk. He will give you some details, but it's, it is also based on, um, a, based on super attractive uh, maps where two orthogonal states are the ones that the other states converge to. And uh, we think that this will give a somewhat different uh, um, test of these uh, noisy quantum computers. And also uh, these measurement induced dynamics that I, that I showed you today um, can be, can be uh, applied for many qubit states for two qubit states as well, which might have some uh, application in quantum communication. For instance, they, they might be useful for a quick orthogonal, uh, quick entanglement distillation, sorry, of pure states, or um, it might also be interesting that uh, even entanglement can behave chaotically. Okay. Thank okay, you. great. Thank you very much. Um, it's not only an interesting piece of research, but what I really like about this is that you can make so many cool figures. The, <laughs> this, this, is, this is a nice stuff. Um, yes. So there is, um, there is one question um, um, from in the Q&A. Uh, so it was asked by Alan Santos. And the question is, is there some advantage to using the complex plane to define qubit states? And that is, in both the block sphere and complex plane, we need to we need two parameters to define the qubit state. Yes. But in the plane state, we need to work with infinite number to send the state cat one. Okay. So actually, it's it's useful because we in in our protocols we find these nonlinear maps of uh, of of complex numbers. And these have a very nice uh, mathematical description, nice theor theorems 
uh, are known about these uh, nonlinear maps or quadratic rational maps, uh, actually. And those are helpful when, when one wants to uh, understand more the dynamics here. Yeah. I think um, I can I cannot agree more with your with your with your answer. I have particularly found the last open question to be interesting <laughs> on your slide. So uh, thank you very much for being here. Um, now it's going to be a break, and uh, we're going to continue on schedule. So uh, see you the rest of the day. Enjoy the program. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.